Okay, great. Well, I'm, uh, uh, as you know, probably know, I'm Carl Magnus Palm, who's written all those ABBA books and liner notes and everything like that. Uh, okay, we have a few latecomers. Everybody here now? Yeah. Uh, please just gather here, and I'm just going to talk for, for just a bit, and then you can walk around and take pictures and do whatever you want here. Um, well, so we're, we're uh, now in this, uh, in this studio, the Atlanta studio, welcome, uh, formerly known as the Metronome Studio. So I'm going to tell you a bit the, the story of the studio and Abba's work here. But uh, before, before we do that, well, first of all, I'm just going to point something out to get you, to get you started thinking. Um, these two microphones and these well, these stands or stands like them from this studio and headphones like these. If you've seen that that bit where uh, that piece of film where Agnetha and Frida are uh, recording the vocals for Dancing Queen, this is this is the actual microphones they use. So this is really authentic stuff. So you know now that you're in you're in the right place for Abba for Abba history. Baby, baby, you're at a to some music for just a minute. music that ABBA recorded in this very studio where we are right now. And uh, for instance, towards the end there of Money, 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 you heard some a drum roll on timpani. Well, that was played on these actual timpani standing over here. I'm touching them now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what about this studio then? Well, uh, originally uh, these premises housed a cinema 
that opened in 1941. It closed down 18 years later in 1959. And at the time, there was a very famous record company in this country called Metronome. And they were looking for uh, a, new, uh, a new recording studio. So they bought, they bought this place, uh, refurbished it, tore out all the cinema th stuff, um, you know, worked on it. And in 1960, the studio could open for operations. Uh, open for operations? Open for recordings. And, um, and of course, uh, since then, it hasn't actually changed that much. So it pretty much looks like it did in 1960, and also obviously like it did in, 19, in the 1970s, whenever we're working here. Um, this studio quickly became one of Sweden's top studios, if not the top studio. They did some more work here on the acoustics and refined it. So a few years into the 1960s, it was really a, a really, really great studio that just became greater. So it wasn't just the metronome record label who used it, because there were other record labels who wanted to use it, because it was such a good studio, especially those that didn't have their own studio. And one of those labels was uh, Polar Music, which was founded in uh, 1963 by um, Stig Anderson and Bank Manhog. And the very first artists to sign to Polar Music was the Hoopnetty Singers, with Bjorn as a member. So he started recording here in 1963, and he recorded, I think, virtually everything in this studio throughout the 60s. In fact, all of the ABBA members recorded here in the 1960s at some point or other. Um, Agneta, she recorded, um, well, she recorded uh, some, uh, well, complete albums in this studio. And Frida, she uh, recorded just one single, but she did record it. <laughs> and uh, Benny, well, the Hepstars, they recorded their music in another studio. They never worked as a group here. But, and now we come to a very interesting and important historical moment in the ABBA history. In 1966, Bjorn and Benny met. They started writing songs together and all that. And later that year, uh, the Hootenay singers were recording a new album. And for a song called Blumman, which translates as The Flower, they needed someone to play the electric organ. And they thought, who do we know who plays the organ? Ah, Benny Anderson. So they called him, asked him to come over and play the Hammond organ on that, um, on that track. And that was the very first time that Bjorn and Benny recorded together, appeared on the same recording. And the organ that he played on is actually the Hammond organ standing right over there the, with the wooden finish. Uh, so you can have a look, closer look at that later on. But that, that was the organ used. So, so it's all happening right here. Um, by the early 70s, uh, Bjorn and Benny started working as producers at Polar Music. They were the house producers, they produced everything there. So they liked to use this studio, of course, and use this uh, as much as they could. Uh, a little earlier than that, in 1970, they recorded their duo album, Lika, which translates as happiness, as you know. And uh, that was also a very important process, because in 1967, there was an engineer, Michael B. Tretto, who started working at this studio. So Bjorn, he knew him, because Michael had recorded the Hooten and the so they, they were already friendly. But Benny had re never really connected with Michael, because he, had no, he hadn't really worked with him. But during the sessions for that album, that, that's when you know, that famous trio, Bjorn and Benny and Michael, got together and really discovered how much they shared in terms of ambition and they wanted to make the recording sound great and they had the same sense of humor and they really connected. Um, so that was an important thing, but even more important of course on that album was a song called Hey Gandaman, Hey Old Man, which was released as a single and became a big hit and the backing vocalists was of course Agneta and Frida. And yes, it was recorded right here in this studio. So another historical important moment taking uh, place here, right here. Um, but now we finally reached the ABBA years. And you can ask different people on when did ABBA start and how did they start and why did they start. And we have the famous quote from Benny when he said, you know, it never started, it never ended. But if you ask me, uh, 
ABBA were born right here in this studio. Because when they came here on that March day in 1972 to record a song called People Need Love, they only knew that they wanted to do that recording. But when that was finished, after you know, that day's work, then we had the very first ABBA recording. If we define an ABBA recording as Bjorn and Benny and Yetta and Frida recording pop music in English. Uh, so, this is the birthplace of ABBA, uh, this studio, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then, of course, the ABBA story really starts between 1972 and 1976. They recorded virtually everything in this studio. It was a very popular studio, and because it was so popular, each record label that wanted to use it only had one day each week when they could be here. And I think Polar had the Wednesdays. So obviously for, for the Ring Ring album they had to find time uh, in other studios as well. But most of it was recorded here. And of course one of the most important, another groundbreaking moment in the ABBA story, the title track of the album, Ring Ring. I think you all know the story about how Michael Chetov had uh, read this book. Um, about Phil Spector, the American record producer, and how his wall of sound came together, and uh, you know that he had five guitars and three pianos playing all at the same time. And Michael and Bjorn and Benny decided, well, let's try this, but we'll do it our own way. We'll just record all the instruments twice. And also, Michael had this other idea: let's just change the speed a little between the overdubs, and when you do that, you get a much bigger sound. And that was the start of the ABBA sound. They refined it. They didn't just copy the, the American wall of sound, from Spectre's wall of sound. They refined it with all the, the layers of Agneta Frida on top as well. But that was the start of it. That was the real, real first thing they did, which could be described as the ABBA sound. Uh, after Ring Ring, of course, came the Waterloo album. And that's the only ABBA album that was recorded here from start to finish with no sessions elsewhere that I'm aware of, at least. Uh, after that, uh, Michael Tretov left his employment here, started working at Glenn Studio, and because Bjorn and Benny wanted so much to work with Michael and, and Agneta Frida, of course, as well, um, they followed him there. So the third album, the ABBA album, that was mainly recorded at Glenn Studio. But towards the end of the recording sessions for that album, they actually returned here. So some of the biggest hits from that album, like I Do, I Do, I Do, and Mamma Mia, uh, they were completely recorded here. And um, speaking of Mamma Mia, the famous opening, du -tick, du -tick, du -tick, and all that, that was actually played on that very instrument. Uh, Benny usually says that it was a marimba, but this is actually a xylophone those of you who are interested in details like that. <laughs> um, that's the one he used for that, and a Tropical Love Lemon, of course, as well. Are we allowed to have a little go later? Uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, I think also, you know, SOS, which we think of a, of a recording made in Glenn Studio, I think that was finished here as well. You know the famous story when they start, stayed late one night, and thought, oh, you know, we need something more here, and that's when they invented, you know, thought of that, <coughs> that's so characteristic of SOS. I think that was recorded here as well. So the album came together in this studio. The final ABBA album that was recorded here from start to finish was Arrival. They did uh, the basic backing track for Dancing Queen at Glenn Studio, but apart from that, everything was recorded in here. And um, for instance, on uh, Knowing Me, Knowing You, there's a very characteristic electric piano that Ben plays, like de -de 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 when Frida is singing verses. And that's the word, it's her electric piano standing to the right over there. Uh, that's the one they used for Knowing Me, Knowing You. You can take pictures and, and all that later. And the grand piano over here, with the wooden finish. If you hear a piano on an ABBA recording made in this studio, uh, that's the piano they used. So uh, the other one you've seen, you've probably all seen the YouTube clip uh, the other day with, with uh, Agneta at, at the black grand piano. 
which usually stands over there. That's now in there, but that, that's the one they use now. But at the time, that was the one they, they, uh, they used for recording sessions. Uh, after 1976, ABBA didn't use this studio so much. They did some, some sessions for ABBA the album, and uh, you know, one or two, and they also recorded the basic backing track for Summer Night City here. And they also liked to come here and do mixing sessions because they were familiar with the mixing desk over there. So even if they recorded it in another studio, they liked to come here to finish it. Uh, but of course, in 1978, they opened their own Polar Music Studio, so they didn't, they didn't come here so much. Uh, the control room, which is behind the glass over there, uh, that's obviously where Michael Chetto would be sitting, uh, recording all the musicians, Bjorn and Benny and the other musicians playing, and Agneta Frida singing. And also that's where Bjorn and Benny and Michael would be sitting when they were mixing, and you know, late nights when they were trying to refine the recordings. And I'm, I'm sure sometimes Benny had, you know, 10 ideas, so he probably ran out here to do another keyboard overdub and they tried. And so much of the work, <laughs> much of the creative work was done uh, in the control room. And uh, the Neve mixing desk, that's the brand of the mixing desk, Neve, uh, that's the same since 1973. We don't think it was used on the Ring Ring album, but from the Waterloo album onwards, that's the mixing desk they used. And much of the other technical equipment in there was also the same as in the 70s when, when uh, ABBA worked in here. So then, after the ABBA years, did, did, um, did ABBA completely turn their backs on this studio? Well, no, not really. At least not Benny and Agneta. Agneta recorded her album My Coloring Book in this studio. She also recorded the video for If I Thought You'd Ever Change Your Mind here. What would use of flowers in the morning When the garden they should grow in is not mine And what use is sunshine from crying And my falling tears are mingled with the wine except the vocals and the strings were recorded here. So if you hear someone play an instrument, drums or, you know, piano, whatever it is, that was recorded here. or the Benny Anderson Band. They recorded their very first album here uh, in 2001. And famously, uh, Benny brought together the original ABBA musicians to re-record the uh, ABBA songs for, for the Mamma Mia movie soundtrack. And that was in this studio. So they, they returned here from time to time. And the studio itself. Well, in 1983, Metronome Studio decided to sell, sell it. 
And the buyer was uh, Jan Hansson, who is the engineer, who's around here somewhere. <laughs> Uh, and uh, he and his wife Katerina, they've been uh, running it ever since then, and they renamed it Atlantis Studio, of course. And finally, from my own point of view, I have to say that of all the places in Stockholm, this is the one that that's really has the strongest ABBA connection for me. You can see places where they had a photo session, where they recorded a video, but everything else is gone. The Polar Music Studio has closed down, the Polar Offices or something else completely, you know, buildings have been torn down, etc., etc. So if you want to experience a place where ABBA really did work, where they created their music, where they were being ABBA, this is the only place left to go. So for me, it's a very... It's always very emotional coming here, and you know you feel you're in the in the center of where it all happened. So anyway, um, now you can walk around freely. You can walk around in here, and you can walk around in the control room and take pictures and uh, ask questions if you want to. I'm not sure I'll be able to answer them, but I'll try my best. Uh, so thank you so much for listening. Viva l'Italia!